And physiologically, what is going on in my body when I get to that 85, 90% effort range and I, and I stay there for a couple of minutes that doesn't occur when I'm doing my Stairmaster? I mean, so many things are, are happening. I mean, there's a lot of different, I would say, physiological responses that are... You've got a big smile on your face when I ask that Yes, question. I do, because it's, you know, one of my favorite things to talk about. And it has to do with when you're, when you're pushing yourself really hard, you need, you need to make energy, right? Mm -hmm. And the way that most of our cells make energy, like our muscles, is by using our mitochondria. These are tiny organelles inside of our cells that produce energy, but they need oxygen to do it. So that's where the oxygen comes into play. When you start to push yourself really hard, you can't get the oxygen to your muscles quick enough, but you need to make the energy. And so your body decides to make energy in the form of ATP without the mitochondria, and it uses glucose to do that. And you're not making as many of those ATP energy molecules, but you're still making them, and you're making them quick, and that's what your, your body wants to do. And, and, and so it's using glucose to do that without the mitochondria, but as a byproduct, it's making something called lactate. And this is what gets me so excited because, you know, for the longest time, lactate was thought to be this just metabolic byproduct of glucose metabolism, you know, where you're, when you're pushing yourself really hard, anaerobic, it's called anaerobic. By the way, you're not, you're not only anaerobic, you're just some, somewhat anaerobic. You're still use, producing energy with your mitochondria. It's just you're also producing it without the mitochondria. It's not like a, a sort of black, black and white sort of thing, right? It's a little bit gray. Mm -hmm. But the reality is you're producing something called lactate. And for the longest time, it was thought this lactate, oh, it's just, it's bad because, you know, it can form lactic acid and that burns, your, forms that burn in your muscles. And, you know, this was, you know, decades ago. And we now know from the work of George Brooks out of UC Berkeley that lactate itself isn't causing the burn. And not only is it not causing the burn, it's like a miracle molecule that's being made. This metabolite, lactate, gets into your circulation and it gets consumed by your heart, by your brain, by your liver, and it's used for energy. It's very, it's, it's very much similar to beta-hydroxybutyrate, that ketone body that you always hear about. People talk about when they're fasting or doing a ketogenic diet. It's actually very similar to that. It gets used, it gets transported through the same transporter, and it's used like energy, very similar to that. Um, but what's more exciting is that lactate is a way for your muscles to communicate with other organs like the brain. And it's called the signaling molecule. So it's your muscles are going, I'm working really hard. This is really hard. We have to respond to this work. We have to adapt. And so your body goes, okay, I got to like turn on all this awesome stuff that I have because I'm working so hard. I need to respond to that so that like I'm, I'm good, right? And so what happens is the lactate, this has been shown, it gets consumed a lot by the brain. And in the brain, it, it activates something called brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF. And this is kind of like a miracle grow for your brain. So essentially, it's able to increase the growth of new neurons, which is amazing. It's called neurogenesis. It increases the connections between neurons, so it improves memory, cognition. And then um, it's involved in what's called neuroplasticity, so the ability of your brain to adapt to a changing environment. This is all from lactate. Um, and it also increases neurotransmitters like norepinephrine, so focus and attention, serotonin, your, your mood, you're feeling better, you're you know, motivated. All these things are happening because of lactate. And there's been studies in humans showing that people that are compared working hard, working out hard, vigorous exercise versus sort of moderate to light exercise, they make more lactate. And that lactate, you know, it's been shown that high levels of lactate are correlated with improved cognition scores, uh, improved impulse control. So serotonin plays a role in impulse control. So you're able to not just go on your impulse, right? You're, you're able to kind of like, which is great if you want more focus and attention, right? So this is, this is all really exciting stuff because it all comes down to just, it's, it's like your muscles are these little chemical pharmaceutical factories. And the way to make them make these pharmaceuticals is to work them, to challenge them. 
And that can be done with an easy, high-intensity interval training protocol. A variety of them at Norwegian 4x4 can increase brain-derived neurotrophic factor. That's been shown. The one-minute on, one-minute off protocol also has been shown to increase that, again, through the lactate. So that's one of the big sort of, I would say, differences between vigorous intensity exercise and more of that moderate intensity or like low intensity exercise. And I honestly think, you know, I think the guidelines, you know, all, everyone's sort of obsessed with steps. I need to get my 10,000 steps in, my 10,000 steps. And they have wear, wearable devices. And I think that's great. But I think we need to change the 10,000 steps to at least 10 minutes of vigorous intensity exercise. Like you could do 10 minutes of, you know, any type of exercise that's really going to get your heart rate up and it's going to be so much better. So this is a really dumb question, but it's the question that I had in my mind, which is if lactate is such a miracle drug, why can't I just drink it? Why can't I just get, get a shot of lactate versus Wait. having to go through vigorous interval training? It's a great question, Stephen, because um, there have been studies that have been done looking at, for example, traumatic brain injury patients, so people that have undergone some sort of head trauma, and they've infused sodium lactate through like an IV into their you know, system, and the lactate immediately gets consumed by the brain, and it's been shown to improve their recovery. So it's called the Glasgow score. You may have heard of it, but it's kind of essentially this battery of tests that's done to sort of assess how someone's recovering from traumatic brain injury. And the sodium lactate does improve that. So there are you can find out there, you know, different types of lactate that you can consume. Mm -hmm. And theoretically, it should help. But what happens is when you consume the lactate, lactate actually gets used by the gut. So a lot of it's going into the gut cells before it gets into your circulation. There's always a trade-off with these bloody things. Whenever you try and tr trick the system or shortcut the system by, like, drinking something, I feel like there's a trade-off which people don't talk about a lot. Well, the thing is, is that I, it is good for the gut. In fact, a former co colleague of mine, Mark Chikanaga, has shown that lactate is really beneficial for, for uh, the gut epithelial cells. And in fact, if you think about it, all these sort of beneficial probiotic bacteria, like bifidobacterium, for example, they're producing lactic acid. And that lactic acid does get converted into lactate. It's sort of like this physiological homeostasis where you have uh, the difference of just a hydrogen atom. So you're having lactic acid and lactate sort of in this equilibrium, so to speak. But um, those those bacteria in your gut are making lactate, essentially. And the reason it's so good is because it is a very e easily utilizable source of energy for the gut cells. So not to like go off on a tangent here. Yes, there is always a trade-off, especially for doing something orally. But when it comes to exercise, there's so, like I mentioned when we first started talking about exercise, if you could pill up what exercise does, it's, it, it, I mean, it's so many things, right? It's not just the lactate. Yeah. So many different things, so many different adaptations that occur. I mean, it would be a miracle drug. So there's, you're not just getting the lactate. You're getting, the, you know, the improvement in cardiorespiratory fitness. You're getting the muscular response, right? The adaptations to your muscle. Um, you're, you're increasing stress response genes, like heat shock proteins that are important for preventing neurodegenerative disease. You're making antioxidants because the inflammation that you're generating while you're exercising. There's hundreds and hundreds of things that are happening all in concert from exercise. And you just can't, you can't pill it up. 